three, two, one, go. Enjoy. And we're off. I think a lot of people like the idea of commitment. And maybe because it's so closely tied to the success of relationships, which I wouldn't argue. When I think of commitment, the first thing that comes to mind is time and the patience of. So I just started Cotswold Way 2023 and main goal is to finish this time but really I want to go under 24 hours so I'm just going to manage everything the way I should and try and be very diligent with my nutrition. Let's see how that goes. You see time has an opportunity cost. We only get so much of it and when we invest time into one thing we must sacrifice how it is spent on another. To me, that is the power of commitment. You can commit to multiple objectives at the same time. However, each additional commitment allows less time for others, which shows you what you really value in life and from the experience. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, cheers. Thank you. Coming into Broadway, just over five miles in, 45 minutes roughly. Going well, eating, drinking. All right, we're 10 miles in now. I'm with Nick, who's just here, and uh. So far, an hour and a half. Uh, for me, I've eaten more than I have ever in the first 10 miles of any run. And as long as it stays down, that's a good sign. So, so far, so good. Average pace is way faster than I thought it'd be. And the only way I can look at that positively is banking time, which everyone says never do. <laughs> so, we'll see how that turns out. But for now, I'm going well as we come into a very nice village, which I don't know the name of. Checkpoint one, here we go. Stumps cross. And the thing about commitment, it's not just about you. It's about the people around you and that you have to fully commit as well. So Francois is about to arrive in Winchcombe. So if you come here, Joe, this is the sort of thing we're doing for him. We've got water, fruit, we've got a cool box full of goodies here. So we're just gonna wait and see what it is that he requires. But yeah, all good so far. Okay, that's fine, off he goes. Bye! 20 miles in now, Bellis nap, 3 hours 15, average pace 9 minutes 50 per mile. Sun hasn't come out today, which is good, a nice breeze keeps it cool. On our way to uh, Ags Hill. So just saw the girls in Winchcombe there, topped up on my drinks, had a bit of 
food to eat and then cracked on and uh, when we get to Ags Hill it'll be 27 miles so 7 miles away and I'll have a slightly longer break and try and get some food on board I've been having crystallized stem ginger every 10 miles with the idea that that settles the stomach so fingers crossed it works Legs are feeling fine. Enjoying the hills with the poles. Yeah, so early, early days still. Long way to go. There are a lot of things that can go wrong over the course of a 100 mile ultra. And you can always plan for the best. But as we all know, you definitely need to plan for the worst. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Cheers. No four, yeah. Axe Hill, 27 miles. Here we go. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing? For the crew bit. Not loads so. though. Hi. Hello. 30 miles in now. And uh, it's taken five hours, 16 minutes so far. Average pace is 10 minutes, 30 per mile. Had a decent feed at uh, 27 miles, Ags Hill, and now on my way to Birdlip via Leckhampton. <sighs> Had some orange juice, which didn't feel great, so might steer clear of that. Legs are okay, and I've been listening to some music, which has helped keep me focused and on point. So yeah, five hours in, 30 miles in, so far so good. It's only getting started. Let's go. Planning for the best and catering for the worst is a perfect metaphor for resistance. You log hundreds of hours and countless miles preparing for a strong race just to be challenged to do it on a sensitive stomach and an inability to eat anything solid at all. Crickley Hill, just under a mile to the next aid station, Birdlip. 37 miles in now. And this is the spot two years ago where I made the decision I was going to pull out. Um, thankfully this year I'm not feeling quite so bad. Um, my appetite's decreased somewhat but I'm still feeling okay. I'm not feeling nauseous in any way so that's good. Um, I'll see what I can do at this next aid station. Let's get there. We're here at Birdlip and we've just passed Francois up there and uh, he should be coming around that escarpment soon and then he'll have done 38 miles. He had an energy drink, key, pinky, shaky thing uh, and he was looking strong but it's drizzly and we're warm in the car. <laughs> Just coming into Birdlip Aid Station, 38 miles. Hello. Yeah. 
Thanks for coming everyone. Thanks. Okay, 40 miles in now, uh, 7 hours 14, and uh, average pace is 10 minutes 50 per mile. Uh, I didn't manage to take on too much at Birdlip Aid Station there. Stomach's uh, doing what it normally does, but things are staying down, so I had a sip of Coke and orange juice, and uh, We'll see what happens at the next one in six miles, but hoping to be able to eat something. Legs are feeling fine. Fitness feels fine, I just know that I should be eating. Cooper's Hill, where they do that world famous cheese rolling competition not going directly up there but still going up around it that, that right there is resistance it attempts to slow you down it tries to derail you and wants you to stop it is justification and excuse to give up on your prior commitments and me? Well, most of the time I'm too stubborn to give in on all that hard work. You see, resistance is a test that creates a barrier to achieve your best. Do you personally know what's on the other side of what's pushing back at you so hard? Because I do, and by no means is it fluffy clouds and warm cuddles. But it is an opportunity to gain powerful moments of self-reflection and build that resistance. It's getting pretty dark in the forest now. Nearly time for the head torch, but I'm going to try and get to Painswick without it. Some tough, short hills there. But uh, got up them. Good old poles proving their worth. Just coming into Painswick Rugby Club checkpoint. Forty seven miles, eight and a half hours. Hello, my love. Hello. Hi. Next stop, Coley Peak. Okay, it's 50 miles. In nine hours, 30 minutes. Average pace, 11 minutes, 25. Just about to start another hill. Inevitably, darkness eventually crept in and the visual representation of the course disappears. I was left to navigate the rest of the race through the lens of six feet in front of me. That little beam of head torch shining on the ground. I'm all alone. You see, the highs are great while they last, but over the course of 100 miles, don't expect them to last forever, even for very long. They come in and out and the experience is a roller coaster ride. The thing is, these feelings, these lows, that's why I do it. By the time nightfall had come, the field had spread out considerably and I was definitely on my own, settling in for a night of solitude. Just going into a Kylie Peak checkpoint now, 59 miles. Very tired. Uh, here I 
Cheers. Yeah, just behind the other guy. Okay, Thanks, man. Cheers, Carl. Probably, I need to sit down for a bit, I think. Uh, it's on the cusp of food, so uh, it depends what there is. That's some soup. It's got great reviews so far. Next runner. Slowing down wobbly and it's going to be two to three hours. Uh, you okay? You're good? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, is that on there? It's Francois Coley. <laughs> Coley P Gay Station. This is the driest Pringle I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> I've only had one. I'll try and force one more down. Just past Coley checkpoint. 60 miles in now. 11 hours 50. And uh, 11 minutes 50 pace. Managed to have a bit of soup there, a bit of coke, better than nothing. But I'm feeling it now. 60 miles in, 42 to go. Let's go. Now you, uh, now you can't see what lies ahead, but I know what lies ahead. And it's one of the worst climbs on this course leading onto Camlong down and then into Dursley. The headlamp is your guide and your ears pick up sounds like you turn the volume up 10 notches. This is when it's time to work. You see, the darkness it provides the solitude I wanted to experience. I didn't sign up for an ultra for the first 50 miles, I signed up for the final 50 miles. Okay, hello people. 70 miles in now, 14 hours, 25 minutes, average pace is 12 minutes, 21, and uh, so far I've done 10,100 feet of climbing, so uh, yeah, 70 miles in. I've got just under 10 hours to do the final 32 and a half miles. Let's crack on. On a daily basis, you don't get the amount of solitude you really need. But in the middle of the night, what better place than running trails in the middle of nowhere as your mind starts to wander and you go a little bit crazy. Hey. For me, certainly by mile 50, deep into the night, I'd stopped eating Hello. anything solid. It was a tough mental game to get through. I knew I had to take on calories and fluids and could just about stomach that. But it was slow going. Okay, 80 miles in now. And uh, just about to come into Horton Aid Station. 16 hours, 46 minutes. And uh, average pace is 12 minutes. 35, 80 miles in. I was balancing the drive to keep running and shuffling my feet forward one mile at a time, but also internally analyzing my thoughts, knowing that I had to take on fluids and fuels as often as I could. This is what digging into your pain cave really looks like. Each time you go a little bit deeper, you can't read about it or discuss it. You have to feel it and it's different for everyone. Hey. There's no substitute. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, number four. Front right, two, drink, hot, cold, what do you want, my friend? Down. Sit down for a second. Sit down. Take a seat wherever you want. You can do a cup of tea. Yeah, a cup of tea. Do you want me to fill your bottles up while you sit down? I've got a blanket, you can put a blanket over your legs if you want to make sure you don't get cold. No, oh, I'm okay. I have a cup of tea. Shall I take your bottles? Hi guys! So we are at Tall Martin, which is at mile 87. Uh, we saw Francois just a, about half an hour ago, but he's doing really, really well. Um, he's looking like he'll finish in really, really good time. So he feels well. He's had a milkshake. Um, he's changed his trainers and his socks and dealt with his feet. 
Um, so now we've got his stinky trainers in the car. Lovely. Um, so yeah, all good. Joe and I are having a cup of tea now. We're pretty tired. Um, not as tired as Francois. <laughs> Although... Um, It's easy to say you want to run 100 miles, but do you want to do it to feel the finish line or really when you're broken down and questioning the entire thing? Which appeals to you most? You okay, my love? Do you need anything from us? Good morning, it's finally getting light, 90 miles just gone, in 19 hours 31 minutes, average pace is 13 minutes per mile, I've got 12 and a half miles to go, uh, tough night of ups and downs, but uh, I got a second wind, um, and right now I'm just tired running out of energy, but gonna get it done running where I can and walking fast where I have to. Some big hills still to come, but we got it. People talk about growth, but the thing is, there's very few that want to do the growth part to get there. It takes true grit. For me, it's the last 20 to 30 miles. It's always the toughest. I'm tired. My eyes start closing. I have to keep moving. If I stop for three to five minutes, I'll start getting cold. I'm shuffling along. And whereas before you're looking into 10 miles ahead, now you're looking five miles, three miles, one mile ahead, breaking it down into smaller sections, yeah. manageable sections, and ticking them off as you go. You will miss that. There's so much power in a 100 mile foot race and a lot of that comes at mile 80 and 90 and there's no way to get there without doing 80 or 90 miles before that. That's the power of it. Feeling that perspective, it can't be bought. It can't be transferred to someone else and you have to actually do the prerequisites in order to get there. You apply the plan and you adapt if it changes. We're in Bath now. Just over two miles to go. If you're ever going to do this race, you must not forget that with two miles to go, there are some soul destroying hills to really finish you off. That's not it. Carries on on the other side of the road. Oh, come on. Wow. Before I get into the hustle and bustle of Bath City Centre, I just want to say a huge thank you to Jenny and Joe for crewing 
you have been amazing and so supportive and I really appreciate it. I'd also like to say thank you to everyone that came out to support me at various points and urge me on is most welcome. All that's left now is get to the Abbey. Let's go. Hello, Hello. we're at Bath and he is very very soon going to appear and finish the race and he's done so so well and we are really really proud of him. Um, so fantastic fantastic event. Well done my love! You got this! I'll follow you. Thank you. 